asynchronous JavaScript, callbacks, promises, async await. Huh? This is one of the most difficult concepts for me to learn in JavaScript, but don't worry because we'll break it all down in about 10 minutes. All right, first off, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is James Q. Quick, and every week I do one to two and sometimes three videos on web development, including topics like asynchronous JavaScript, which I am really excited about because asynchronous JavaScript, learning how, how and why JavaScript is asynchronous and how to work with it is one of the most important concepts you can learn in JavaScript specifically. It makes JavaScript as a language a little bit more unique in comparison to other languages, and it really is just core to how JavaScript works and the JavaScript that you will be writing in your day to day. So there's three different categories commonly of asynchronous JavaScript. We'll start off with callbacks. We'll talk about those. Then we'll get into promises and we'll talk about those. And then we'll talk about async await, which is a newer feature in JavaScript that really kind of streamlines the process of writing asynchronous code and is my personal preferred way to write asynchronous JavaScript. So make sure you stick around to the end to know how to write JavaScript, asynchronous JavaScript in the latest and greatest and my favorite way. So let's go ahead and get started. And I've got lots of different callouts in here for different things we're gonna do. Let's start with the idea of a callback. And an example of this is one we've probably seen many times. It's where we can do a set timeout, for example. And a set timeout will take a callback function. And you've probably heard that term in that sense before. And in this case, what we're saying is we're calling set timeout, we're passing it this function, which will log out, waited for one second, and we're telling it how long to wait before it does that, which is in this case, one second, which is a thousand milliseconds. So we save this and after about a second, we should see that message come up. Now this is asynchronous because we tell it, hey, in the future, JavaScript LAN node, call this function after the appropriate amount of time. That's why that is JavaScript, or that's why that is asynchronous, it's also JavaScript. So I wanna give you, a little bit uh, deeper of an example here where you can have nested set timeouts. And this gets uh, into an example of demonstrating the callback hell that you can get into. And you get into this kind of like Christmas tree pattern, but you have a callback function here and that thing is waiting a second and then logging out three. And then inside of that, you call a function that then takes a callback function. Inside of that one, you then have a callback function so this is callback hell where you're nesting and nesting and nesting this stuff. And this will do maybe what you expect where it'll do wait a second, then do three, two, one, and then you're on. So those are your traditional callbacks or a traditional kind of simple examples. You could also have uh, something like this where if, let's say we had a button in browser JavaScript and we called button.add event listener and we listen for the click event and then pass it a uh, callback function. And this is another example of a callback where we register for this event and then our handler, the callback here, is this part here. Now this code is uh, running in node, so I don't have access to the DOM and DOM element, so I'll get rid of this. Just wanted to show you that that's another example, a common example of callbacks in JavaScript. I'm gonna comment this one out. So now let's talk about the idea of an error first callback. This is where all the code that we've run so far in those callbacks, there's not really much of a chance for anything to go wrong, but what if it does? So let's do uh, an fs.read file. And uh, I've imported the fs module up here as well as a node fetch. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the fs module is the file system module inside of node. So in this case, we're wanting to read a file. So let's do an fs read file. We'll tell it which file we wanna read. We'll tell it what kind of encoding we want to convert it to, which in this case is UTF-8. And then we'll have a callback that takes two properties, an error property as the first one, or parameters, error as the first one, and then data as the second one. And the reason is you might fail to actually read this file. So if we just start with logging out data and it's done correctly, you can see it has the text here from that text file. And hey, this is an awesome video, that's cool. Uh, but what if something goes wrong? What if we type in test.2? Well, it's saying undefined here because there is no data because an error happened. So a traditional way that you'll see a lot of this code is something like this. And I'll just kind of paste in this example where you first check for an error. So if there is an error property, log that out and then do whatever you want. Otherwise, you can assume the data is good. So in this case, it logs out the data. And then if we uh, threw an error here, it will handle that thing and then log it out with this log here. And again, it's throwing an error because this is a file that doesn't exist. All right, 
So that's the idea of an error first callback. And that's really important when we get into promises and async await is these things that are asynchronous. Sometimes things go wrong and we need to be prepared to handle those errors. All right, now let's talk about promises, which is kind of like the evolution of the idea of callbacks. And I want to start by creating a promise. So by creating a promise, you're passing it a function that accepts both a resolve and a reject callback, basically. And then in your code, you want to detect whether or not this thing is successful or it failed. And then if it's successful, you call resolve. If it rejects, if it fails, you call reject. And so I'm going to take a little bit of snippet here to get a random number that is either a zero or a one. And then I'll say if the uh, random number is zero, I'm going to consider that to be a good thing. So I'll call resolve else I'll call reject. So again, promises always have a success path and a fail path referred to in this case as resolve and reject. And then we'll see what that becomes when we use a promise in a second. So since we have this promise, we can call the dot then and dot then will take a callback function where we can uh, log something like success. And we'll save this and we'll refresh. And we start by saying that there was an unhandled promise rejection. So let's save again. Then we see success and success and unhandled promise exception. The reason is that when we use this promise, remember it can resolve or reject. The, the dot then in this case, passing this handler to the dot then is only handling the success case. If we want to handle the bad case, the error case, it's a dot catch. And then we can do our callback function here with a console error of something went wrong. All right, so now we say this, say this, you see something went wrong and then something went wrong and then success. So we're handling both of those. So we create a promise with a function that takes in resolve and reject. And then based on the action that goes inside of this function, you or the promise itself will decide whether or not that's actually successful or not. All right, so that is us creating a promise, but what if we just wanted to use an existing promise? Well, we can use in the FS modules, there is a promises set of functions where we can call read file in the same way we just did. All right, so this would be doing fs.promises and then calling read file the exact same way that we just did. And now instead of using callbacks, we can handle the dot then and the dot catch. And you'll notice uh, often you see uh, these returned on a new line for readability, and that's a really good habit to get into. So if this is success successful, we'll get the data back and we can log that out, or there is a dot catch for an error, and then we can error that out. All right, so there's our text if it passes, and then if it fails, if we did a test dot two, now you see that this thing is handling the error. So this little snippet up here is how we do read files with promises versus this one up here. And you can tell that this is a little less code that we're having to write with promises. So this is kind of an upgrade here. Now, another good example of promises is with the fetch API and fetch API is how we make XHR requests to a server. And a good fun example of that that I like is using the Pokemon API. So you can uh, call the Pokemon API and you can get some information about a Pokemon back. So if we want to use that uh, inside of node, there's a node fetch uh, package that I have installed so that we can do fetch the same way we would inside of browser JavaScript. So we'll paste in that URL. And then just like what we just saw, we can actually uh, copy this. You can see that that promises will follow a pretty similar format. Well, we'll have a success case, which is in the dot then, and then we'll have the uh, not success case, which is in the catch. So you can see this is successful. It gives us back lots of information about our response, but it's not quite actually the data that we're looking for. So actually what happens is this gives us back a response. And then what we want to do is get the JSON out of that response and getting the JSON out of that response happens to return a promise, which means we can then chain on another thing here where we're going to get the actual data. So then we'll log out the data. And we should see that that comes back with abilities and name and URL. So let's take a second to break this down again. We call fetch. We handle the success case with dot then. We get the response, which is just the raw response that comes back. And then we need to convert that thing to JSON. So res.json returns a promise. Then we can chain on a promise uh, dot then to handle that promise. And then we get the actual data and we log it. If this were to uh, be bad, it would trigger our catch. So you can see 
if we typed in something like undefined, you can see that that is going to throw an error. It says invalid JSON, but we're able to handle that inside of our catch. All right, so now I wanna show you the evolution of promises to async await. This is my favorite way to write asynchronous JavaScript. This is the way that I always do this. So I'm gonna copy in a snippet here. This is gonna be an updated snippet of our load file work that we've done in the past. All right, so this is gonna be an updated snippet of the read file. So this is gonna be an updated snippet of the read file stuff that we've done a few times now. All right, so now in this case, what we're doing is we're defining a load file function. And the reason is if we want to use this async await capability, we have to mark a function as async. So this is looks like a regular arrow function, except we add the async keyword. So now this is an asynchronous function, which means inside of this, we can use the await keyword. So what will happen is we'll call our FS promises read file the same way we did before, but instead of passing callbacks or doing a dot then to handle the responses, we add the await keyword and we get our data right here. That's really cool. This is much more streamlined and a lot more readable for me, especially, or this is my preference in terms of readability. So now if we save this, uh, we'll get, this is an awesome video. So we see that response coming back again. So all that is working, but the problem is what if we do an error here? What if we do test.2? Well, that actually throws an error and that's where we take this one step further where we have a try catch. And so what a try catch is saying is like, hey, let's go ahead and try to run some code, which will be this code here. If some sort of error happens, now we can handle that error inside of this catch this way. So we'll log this thing out. And in this case, what this should do is it should safely handle this response, log out the error, but we're still able to use our async await functionality. Again, I love async await. This is code that I write all the time inside of uh, my personal JavaScript code. All right, so let's take this uh, one last up further and I'm gonna copy in the fetch Pokemon example. So here's our new fetch Pokemon function and it will make a fetch request the same way we saw before, except it's awaiting that response, getting the response here. And then it's awaiting the res.json. Remember that this res.json returned a promise before so now we can await that response the same way we do the original fetch request. So we make the request, we await the response, we take the response, we convert it to JSON and we await that and then we end up getting our data. So in this case, I'm passing in an ID of a Pokemon and then making that request, we should see that we get information coming back. But what if we pass in nothing, which would then make this ID undefined and throw an error, we're not handling it and you'll see that we get an unhandled promise exception here which means that we need to go and handle this with our try catch. So the same way we did this before, here's our try. This is the code that we want to try. And then we'll catch an error and then error that error out if there is one. So now you can see that it throws that or it logs out or errors out that error appropriately, just like we did with our read file. But now this is the type of asynchronous JavaScript that I prefer to use. I love using async await myself. I use async await in every instance that I can. I almost never use callbacks if I can avoid it. And then there are some things that you can do to kind of convert older callbacks to promises. Uh, so you can look that up. Or if you're interested in knowing how to do that, let me know in the comments, but I will always use async await in my JavaScript. I'm curious if you've seen uh, these different formats for doing asynchronous JavaScript, what is your favorite callbacks, promises, async await? Let me know in the comments which one of those you prefer. Hopefully you enjoyed a lot in this video about a cool, challenging topic in asynchronous JavaScript, and I'll see you in the next video.